Okay, uh, excited about uh, our new signees today. Um, you know, the thing that stands out to me about this group is a lot of really good football players with uh, outstanding families. Uh, really appreciate our staff. Uh, they did a super job, uh, had a few hurdles to overcome, and just did a great job developing relationships, long-term relationships. Um, you know, and I just really appreciate the coaches and really our recruiting staff uh, behind the scenes. Starting out with uh, the guys that signed today, Colby Wooden, um, a buck, 6'4", 225 from Archer. He's a guy that was a, a priority for us. Really, he can play defensive end. Uh, he can play buck. We, we think this guy's got uh, a really big upside, very good football player now, and he will be here early with an outstanding family. Jalen Simpson. Uh, is a guy that's been committed to us for a while, uh, really helped us recruit. Um, uh, he was a quarterback in high school, won a state championship. He'll play defensive back. You know, he's got the ability to play safety or corner. Uh, very excited about him. Cameron Kelly, um, you know, from Oscar Smith High School in, in Virginia, also played quarterback, uh, but he will uh, play corner for us. We think this guy's an outstanding uh, athlete, player, or four-point student. Uh, he will be here early, too, uh, with that. Then Tyler Fromm, a tight end, uh, 6'5", 225. You know, he's uh, half a receiver, half a tight end. He's going to give us a lot of fl uh, flexibility. He's a real, real versatile guy, comes from a football family. Uh, very excited about him. He's on campus, and he's been here the last couple of days. Luke Deal, um, a bigger tight end, 6'5", 245. Really a guy that can put his hand down, uh, can block a lot of traditional tight end things. Uh, really excited about him. Luke's been here a couple of days. Uh, he did have a non-contact injury, uh, but we expect him to be back by the first of the season. Uh, Bo Nix, our quarterback, has been committed to us, uh, you know, for a while. We started recruiting Bo, I think, in eighth or, or ninth grade. Uh, you knew early on that this guy had a chance to really be special. And, of course, when he went to Pinson, they won back-to-back -back state championships. He was the MVP of both of those. Uh, he really has something special to him. He will be here in January. He did a super job really leading one of our leaders of our class, really holding everything together. Um, really appreciate uh, his leadership with that. Justin Osborne, an offensive lineman. Uh, he was an IMG when he first started recruiting him. He's at Flower Mound High School now in Texas, a big athletic guy. We think this guy uh, really has a chance to be really good. Uh, we're excited about him getting here. And then uh, Javarius Johnson, a wide receiver from Trustville. Uh, of course, his head coach is a former quarterback of mine way back when, and he told me that when he moved in that, you know, he's got a chance to, to really be good. And, of course, we started watching him in the spring. He had a very good spring game. He came to our camp and he ran a 4-3 and plays bigger than he is. And we offered him and he committed and has been with us the whole time. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, he's just a few yards short this past year of setting – uh, a state record in, in yards reception. So really think he's got a chance to really uh, uh, do big things. Zion Puckett, uh, he's here with us practicing. Zion's a guy that had the ability really to play offense or defense. Um, you know, I think most people that recruited him felt the same way. Uh, he's going to play defensive back for us. Um, he's got a great skill set. Um, you know, he, he makes great grades. I mean, he's our type of person. We're very excited about Zion. Condre Jones uh, really was one of our offensive line priorities. Uh, he's from right down the road, Callaway High School. Um, he's got a chance to be a really good uh, offensive lineman. He also was one of our leaders that really helped us with this recruiting class. And uh, high character guy, got a great family. And Owen Popo is a guy that, uh, you know, really was our defensive leader in recruiting. Uh, just did a super job of helping us hold the – um, you know, class together. I know that people came after him real hard. He hung in there. Travis Williams did a super job recruiting this guy. You know, we're losing four seniors, you know, with our linebacker class, and we needed guys that could come in immediately, and he is that guy that will do that. Got a wonderful family. Uh, really excited about Owen. Derek Hall uh, also was a priority for us from Mississippi. Um, you know, he's a big-time pass rusher. He can also drop. He runs track. Uh, we think he's got a, a big upside, upside, and then um, you know just real excited about uh, Derek and everything that he'll bring. He'll be here early, which I think that is big, and I believe we'll have nine guys here mid-year, so that always helps uh, with that. Nehemiah Pritchard, defensive back from Jackson, uh, is a guy that came to camp. Uh, he ran a 4-3. 
really caught our eye. We watched him throughout the, the season. Uh, I think he played very good in this all-star game that they just had. I think this guy really, he has the ability to play corner or safety. And uh, very excited about him, a good student also. Then DJ Williams, uh, a running back that really caught our eye probably about six weeks ago. Um, and he plays quarterback. And so we watched the film and watched it again. And then we called and found out a little background about him, wonderful person, wonderful family, and we offered him. After we offered him, it seemed like everybody in the country followed with that. And he came on an official visit, really fit, makes great, great grades. Academics are very important to him. And we fought everybody off, and we think this guy's got a chance to be a very good running back uh, for us. And then to hear recently, Jaron uh, Handy, um, you know, he signed with us, a uh, defensive lineman from Mississippi. Uh, very excited about uh, this guy. We felt like he was one of the the best big athletes uh, in the entire country. And uh, this guy right here will have a chance to help right off the bat. Uh, really special type skill set. Marcus Woodson, uh, recruiting the state of Mississippi, did a wonderful job with him and Derek Hall. And uh, so that's always good to, to get back in the state of Mississippi and have some success. You know, we're looking to sign 16 to 17. Um, you know, in this early signing period, you know, and just kind of looking ahead, you know, we feel great about this group that, that signed today. I mean, this is this is uh, got a chance to be a real special class. It already is a very good class, but it's got a chance to be a special class. You know, looking ahead, we're wanting to sign another elite running back. Uh, we're wanting to sign a, another big-time receiver, a couple more offensive linemen, and a couple more linebackers. And I really think we are set up. Uh, in very good shape to do that. Um, like I said, once again, uh, just uh, really appreciate our staff uh, overcoming a lot of challenges uh, in the last month or so and really appreciate these families believing in our coaching staff and uh, with their sons. So real exciting to, uh, day today. Uh, it was our last practice here before we go to the bowl site, which, uh, you know, really proud of our players. I really feel like uh, we've had seven good practices. They've been very intense more intense than normal um, in, in, a, in a bowl prep than what we've done in the past. And uh, so I'm really excited about that, and it's a good way to, to have a break here before we show up in Nashville on the 23rd. Questions? Gus, do you, do you remember one fight like D.J. Williams that the, the recruiting blew up that quick, that fast? Because of yeah, he had, I think you know, he had an injury his junior year, and there wasn't a whole lot of information on him. And... Um, the fact he plays quarterback, I think, has something. But, no, I, I can't remember uh, a running back uh, that, that blew up that fast. But you watch his film, he jumps off the film, and it's got the wow factor. Guys, how different is it as we've done over the years? A guy like Bo, the freshman. Yeah. How, in the preparation, how, how prepared guys like that are to play, to play early compared to how he used Yeah. You know, I think, of course, his dad's his high school coach. And, of course, Patrick. Was one of the all-time greats here, and uh, just does a super job preparing Bo. But you know, Bo's the type when he was in eighth and ninth grade. You know, you felt like he was already in high school, and you know he has that ability. And uh, you know, but he's been helping us recruit. Like I said, him and Owen really are the two guys that really, uh, probably along with KJ. I mean, those guys held this thing together and uh, allowed us to be to this point to have a really, really good chance. The second signing class to have one of the best classes we've had come through here, at least since I've been the head coach. How important is it to have those guys that that do that as kind of high typers? Yeah, in terms of their it's very important. Uh, very important that you know, great players want to play with other great players, and great players with character want to play with other great characters, players with character, and so that's what this group is, and it attracts those type kids, and uh, so that's what I'm really excited about with the leadership they showed to really get us to this point, to have the type of signing class that we did today. Yes, I, I know you kind of went over what you, what you want to have in the class by February, but is there a specific area that you feel is the biggest need that you guys need to address? You, you know, I think really just what I said, you know, another running back, another big time receiver, um, you know, with a few more linemen and a few more linebackers. And I think if we do that, I mean, it's we, we've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. And I think there's a very good chance of that, too. You get a couple kids out of Mississippi, and I know yeah. you can't talk about the future, but I know you guys are on others. Mm -hmm. What has been the key to the success in Mississippi and 
Is that area you guys want to look at more? And more? Yeah, I think Marcus Woodson. Uh, you know, being from from Mississippi, and uh, I think that it's all about relationships. And uh, you know, he did a super job uh, with that, and uh, we'll continue to recruit the state of Mississippi hard. And uh, like I said, we got we got two really good football players from there. Is there anything that you learned from the last this being the second year of yeah. signing period? Is there anything you learned from last year that sort of gives you a better idea of how to approach games? Yeah. Yeah, I think last year was new for everybody, just how quick everything happened. And it's really just like the February sign day. The challenge is you're still dealing with bowl practices and everything that goes with it. And um, So, yeah, anytime you go through it a second time, it helps. Um, we had a better understanding. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of surprises. You know, we had a couple good surprises, uh, but we didn't have any bad surprises. And, you know, I think that has a lot to do with the way that our coaches recruit with uh, the true relationships that they build, they're long-term. Um, by the time somebody signs with with us, they know our coaches very well. They know what they're getting. And, um, you know, like I said, I think that's a big factor. Who's going to be Jaron today? Someone of a surprise? Um, and are there other guys that you think have kind of come through with the letter today or the next couple days? Uh, no, I mean, we, we were expecting to sign him. Um, like I said, he, he fits here with us, and uh, he has got a great skill set. You know, he has a, a, a very unique ability. And as far as, you know, I'll just say this. I think we're in good shape um, to, to finish this thing very strong. That's probably the best way to put it. Can you talk about the importance of getting some pass rushers in this group? Yeah. Yeah, I think nowadays, you know, that that's, you know, the, our league's changing a little bit, you know, and you got to you gotta put, you know, pressure on the quarterback. you got to disrupt the quarterback. So I think that's how you, you got to be thinking really at all positions up front, even – the internal guys have to have the ability to pass rush and get a push up the middle. So, yeah, that always helps. What was it about Javarius Johnson at that camp that just I – mean, I Yeah, I, I think there's two things. Of course, Josh, you know, he puts his stamp of approval on somebody. I mean, I, I coached him and know him very well, and he kind of knows me very well and what we're looking for in our offense. And so in spring when he got there and he had a spring game, I think he had four touchdowns. And, he said, hey, you, you probably need to take a real look at this guy. I said, well, get him to camp the very first day. And he came to camp, he ran a 4-3, and he just really smooth. Some guys run smooth, and he's just one of those smooth guys. He played bigger than he was, and, you know, we offered him, he committed. And, you know, he had an outstanding year, so really excited about him, and I think he's got a chance to be a really good player for us. You're saying there's some 25 players in this class? Yes. Because you only signed around. Yeah, we'll, 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 we're hoping. We'll, we'll see how everything falls out as far as the final numbers. So, uh, yeah, well, we're, we're hoping, yes. You guys play a lot of young guys in the secondary this year, but load up more secondary guys. Just the importance yeah. of having – Yeah, you, you can't have enough guys that can run. And really, if you look, that back end group, they can run. And, and that was a real focus for us that, you know, have guys can run and cover and do the things that – that we want to do, play, you know, bump and run on the outside and be able to keep up with these speed receivers. So you can't have enough defensive backs and uh, really feel good about the group that we have. Some of the players that you talked to earlier this week, you mentioned Joey Gatewood as someone that really stood out during uh, practices. Do you, do you see him as someone that could compete for, you know, playing next year? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. You know, I, I think we recruited him to compete, you know, and now that Jarrett's moving on, I mean, it's open competition. And we're going to play the best player, and he uh, he's really gotten better even during this bowl practice. He feels more and more comfortable, and you know he's the type of guy that just needs more reps. In his defense, he hadn't had a lot of reps. You know, he had the injury to his thumb that really put him back. Um, you know, at the first of season, or he could have played some even this season. Could he play some in the bowl game? It, it's possible. Do you look at that all? You know, considering this four-game redshirt rule of going. It's a bowl game. That's a possibility to play some freshmen. Maybe we haven't, or maybe play them more, even if it is just a bowl yeah, game. Yeah, I think as a coach, you, you look at both those those scenarios, and you know if if they've uh, if they've earned it, and they got a chance to help you and help the team, uh, then both those are options for the bowl. Have any of the young guys, the guys that have red shirt, not played much, caught your eye during their bowl practice? Uh, you know, nobody really standing out right now. Um, I would say, other than I loved our overall effort, our overall attitude, um, our guys desperate to, to getting better. I mean, that's really been 
the big focus collectively, not just the young guys, but, but the older guys too. And so it's been a different different approach, and that's been by design. Yes, you, you said you're losing four senior linebackers. Is that including uh, Richard McBride? Yes, it is, yeah. And uh, Calvin Ashley still with the team? He's still yeah, he's still with the team. We expect him to be back in January. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know we're we're recruiting him, you know, just separately. I mean, he's he's an outstanding uh, player. When he came on campus, he just fits here, and it clicked immediately with with our coaches and our players. Uh, we were really looking for somebody with his skill set. Uh, I mean, he can, you know, you see him, you split him out. Uh, they go one on one in the corner. He can put his hand down. He can do a lot of different things, and he's a great competitor too. And uh, so we're very excited about him. But, yeah, when we play Georgia, that'll be pretty interesting probably the next couple of years. But, you know, he's a great competitor. And, uh, you know, he's, he's here early and will go through spring, which I think is a really positive thing. Do you see Tyler Crom and Luke Deal as similar tight ends? They're, they're, they're a little different. different. And that was by design, too. You know, and I, I think uh, more long bodies, okay, that are versatile uh, was really something that we looked at. Uh, also, and both those guys are tough guys. You know, they're kind of Auburn tough guys, and so uh, they both fit really well with us. How about Dalton for his brother, right? uh, We did recruit him. Uh, everybody in the country, I think, did. Uh, you know, and he's turned into an outstanding player, and there's no doubt with with uh, what he's doing, and it's very impressive to watch. Last practice on campus for the seniors. Yes. What was that like at the end of that? Yeah, yeah the, the younger guys carried him off. The practice field like they always do on the last day here. It's always a pretty special deal. And like I said, we've got a lot of seniors that meant a lot to this program. And, you know, it's always one of those special times that pretty emotional in a lot of different ways for them. And uh, But they got one more game. I know they're excited about that. And they'll, they'll give it their best. Yes, I know you'll kind of shift to, to work week when you get in terms of preparation. But what's it been like on campus, the bowl practices for you guys overall? Uh, you know, it's been, like I said, a little different approach, um, been a little more uh, demanding. That's probably the best way to, to put it. Just that strain to get better each each practice, each day. Um, that's probably the best way to put it. Have you talked to any players uh, about the NFL and who's following? Yeah, we, 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 we've, we've, we've talked to a few. You always kind of around the bowl site. Usually when you get the bowl site, you, you talk a little bit more in detail. Usually when they're here, they're focused on the game and everything that goes with it. But, yeah, we'll have all those conversations with the guys we need to. Are you expecting everybody that's considering to declare to play? Yes, I, I expect everybody to, to play. I mean, they practice extremely hard, everybody on our team. No Colton Davises. What's that? No Colton Davises. Uh, I don't. I, mean, we'll, I think I expect everybody to play. Of your committed guys that didn't sign today, uh, how do you feel about holding on to them in February? You know, like I said, I think we're going to finish this class extremely strong. I mean, I think what happened today gives us a great foundation, and a lot of guys are feeling really good about us. You know, um, for the for the last signing period, so I think we're in a good spot to finish very strong. And like I said, I think we got a chance to to finish this thing, to have one of the better better classes we've had, at least since I've been here. So that's that's very exciting. Uh, plans for Coach Dillingham? Yeah, uh, he's been doing really some observing and, and getting familiar with our personnel, getting familiar with uh, our players, our coaches. At the bowl side, he'll be up in the booth. Um, you know, he'll help me with some logistical things, his down and distance recall and, you know, certain things. You know, he really understands defense is very good. So. You know, he'll be able to help me with the different things that go with that up in the booth. Is it strange now that you're at your point in your career as a head coach that your coaching tree extends to a former graduate assistant who you get his former graduate assistant? You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like yeah, your yeah. Grandpa, so to speak. In yeah. The <laughs> yeah, Grandpa in a lot of different ways. Uh, yeah, you know, Mike Norvell is – I mean, he is a great coach. I knew that when he was our, our GA at Tulsa. He just knew he had something special about him. So it didn't surprise me at all that he's a head coach this level. It's successful. And then, you know, the guy that he brought up, um, you know, and I think that's my comfort zone too from the standpoint, like I said, when I decided to take back over the offense, call the plays, 
uh, he did that exact same thing for Mike, and so it was a real comfortable fit. He's already fit in very good with our staff, and uh, so I'm real excited about him. Alan uh, mentioned Alan mentioned today on the in-house show that he's going to help you out because he knows you want to be in the weeds and call on plays as far as I guess administrative duties and being the head coach. Who do you kind of lean on to help with some of that day-to-day stuff so you can get more involved with the coaching? Yeah, Pat Sadez, he's the one that really is my right-hand guy. But, you know, me and Alan got a great relationship. And, um, you know, so really looking looking forward to, to next season. All right, good. Okay.